Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today with you. Uh, my name is Petr Čecha and with collaboration with Petr Šída and my colleague Marek Papsák, who unfortunately is not able to be here today, uh, we have prepared uh, this presentation about Paleolithic biofacial artifacts in Eastern Bohemia. Uh, First of all, it needs to be said that we do not have a large amount of Paleolithic bifacial artifacts in Eastern Bohemia. We have only a few of them, which is sad on one hand, but on the other hand, it allows to us to make some analysis on all of them or most of them, the type of analysis that would be time consuming or just expensive if we had more Paleolithic bifacial artifacts. Before we start, let me uh, tell you something about regional context in Eastern Bohemia uh, in terms of the middle and the beginning of Upper Paleolithic. Uh, I said the middle because from the Lower Paleolithic we have only two possible sites with one artifact per each site and they are classified as Lower Paleolithic in uh, traditional way, but we cannot be sure if they are not younger, for instance, from the Middle Paleolithic. From the Middle, middle Paleolithic itself, we have 15 sites and over 180 artifacts. And from the beginning of Upper Paleolithic, let's say pre gravitian period, we have just 10 sites with a uh, little over 60 artifacts. None of these sites are Orinacean, and one can be Seletian. Uh, solitary finding, it is one of the bifacial artifacts I will talk later. Besides that, we have another 53 sites that can be described only as Upper Paleolithic without any closure determination. These sites and these uh, 112 artifacts are results of uh, long-term field walking and each site contains like one, two or three artifacts, it's a small, small number and it cannot be dated more precisely than upper Paleolithic in, in general. But uh, maybe between those 53 sites are another Orinacean, or maybe uh, I'm sure that there are some Orinacean sites, we are just not able to recognize them. Here is the, the map of the site. I hope you can see all of the colors. Uh, those yellow dots are these 53 upper Paleolithic in general sites. From this, we have only four sites with bifacial artifacts so far Javorek, Bolehošť, Jaroslav, and Čenčice. Each site is, uh, contains solitary finding. That means only one, one artifact per site and no other artifact before, besides those bifacial ones. And unfortunately, none of them comes from archaeological excavation. They are uh, coin tool findings or uh, field walking findings, but none of them comes from regular archaeological excavation, which is uh, quite hard for us to, to deal with these artifacts. First one is Javorek Mir Bielemnice. It is Nukokian flint hand axe and lightly weathered. Unfortunately, this only artifact was completely unavailable for any analysis. Uh, we uh, didn't, uh, we didn't make it. So, except for this, this photo, I am not able to show you any three dimensional model or something like that. Uh, we will try, we will do our best to, uh, during the next year to make some analysis even for Javorek and Miri Lemnice, but right now I am, I am not able to tell you anything closer. So maybe in our Mikulov Anthropology meeting in future I will be able to tell you something more. Uh, Bolehoš is a coincidental finding from 2008. It was made during the restoration of a cellar in a family house by the owner of, of the family house. Here is a photo. It is a uh, small site, heavily weathered, probably Mikuki and knife, and it 
recently damaged, which was confirmed by the physiology. You can see this break is fresh. In the museum, we think that the break was made by the owner of, of the house and the seller during the restoration, but the man is very strict that no, not at all, absolutely. Uh, I do not have the second half of, of, of the, uh, the, the artifact, so we have to believe them despite the fact that we do not, but we have to. Uh, for each bifacial artifact, except for Yavorek, uh, we created an RTI model, which is technology that you probably know, uh, maybe you use it, despite the fact that it is more often used for metal artifacts or pottery, we, we use it for, for lithics, and as you can see, it allows you to see some details that you are not able to see from photo, and in this case, in case of Holehoš, you are sometimes not even to see it when you have the stone in your hand. So, this is our RT eye model created by Marek Pacák. Uh, Jaroslav, uh, another coincidental finding from 1984, it was already published by Zdenka Nerudová in 2001. Uh, this one was found by a schoolboy in a pond mass again during the restoration of, of the pond and it's spongoli leaf point. Again, it's partly leather, not that hard as, as Bolehoš. Uh, and this is the artifact that could be uh, some Salatian influence or, or import or something like that. But as I said, there is this only this solitary finding. We do not have any, any other lithics. So it's hard to tell. Uh, again, we have created RTI models for uh, this leaf point. And the last one is Čenčice. Uh, the leaf point itself was found in 1986 during field walking. It is the only artifact that was found by the archaeologists, despite the fact it was during the field walking. And until 2013, it was not recognized as a leaf point. We have it in our depository with label that says uh, Middle Paleolithic, question mark. And it is, it is uh, this flint leaf point of the Yeresmanovic type with very strong milk uh, surface. Which is interesting, it was reshaped and re re implied during the Paleolithic. You will see it in our RTI model. And uh, again, it was uh, confirmed by Traceology. And unfortunately, again, there are no other Paleolithic findings from that place, despite almost 40 years of intensive field walking. On that site, we were not, uh, several generations of archaeologists were not able to found another Paleolithic lithic at that site. There is only some Middle Age pottery. Uh, however, less than one and a half kilometers from that place, there is a Gravitian site on the cadastral area of Chanchice. I will show you it later. And so, so we have some, another Paleolithic find from Chanchice, but not from this specific. So, and here is our RTI model, and this part is the part that was reshaped and re-implied during Paleolithic. So we took Bolehoš, Jaroslav and Čenčice, and let, uh, we decided to make some traceology analysis, which unfortunately were mostly without any nice Conclusion. Bolehoš and Jaroslav are just too weathered to see any specific traces. So, as you can see on those pictures, it is weathered surfaces of Bolehoš and Jaroslav. Uh, Čenčice is a similar case, it's not weathered, uh, but it is mostly without any, any specific traces. There were just few residues of resin, and according to the author of analysis uh, Ludmila Kanyákova from Brno University, it was probably used for cutting of soft tissues. 
So this is our result, and when we saw them, we were like, oh my god, I cannot go to Mikulov and say then this and say that's all. So maybe next time. So with Marek Patsak, we have decided to try for us new uh, new way of analyze. It's called APSS analyze, and it is analysis of three-dimensional model, which uh, it highlights convex and concave features by filling numbers or uh, algebraic spheres on the surface of the artifact. Uh, here is a QR code, and when you use your smart, smart devices on it, it will connect you to our web page where you can play with one of the, uh, one of the I think it's Pole there, one of the artifacts that is three dimensional model. Yeah. So, for this APSS analysis, you need three-dimensional model in detail, in very detail, and then the APSS analysis will create you uh, this red, green, and, and yellow model. Uh, each color is that some conca concave or convex feature with some um, digital uh, algebraic number. And if you use it and if you play with it, for some time, uh, you can create orthographic projection of this colorized three-dimensional model, and it can serve as a base for hand drawing of heavily weathered artifact. Because sometimes you, you definitely know that if you have really heavily weathered artifact, it's difficult to draw it because it's weathered. And if you use this APSS analysis, this model, it can help you. Uh, I am definitely not telling that you can use this model instead of drawing, not at all, but you can use it as a base because those convex and concave features on that artifact are colored differently, which you can see, and it increases precision of your hand draw documentation. So you can use it. Uh, you can, of course, use it even for non weathered artifacts, but the result will be. For you, for your hand drawing, it will not be so good. Uh, you will not, you will not need to use it. Then, uh, back to Chenchitsa, the last site with uh, each point. So I said there is another site with Paleolithic artifacts. Here you can see it on the map. So there is Chenchitsa one, that's the place with the leaf point, and Chenchitsa four. Uh, Chenchitsa 4 is a uh, site, again, uh, we are doing field workings there since 2012-13 and for the time we have now, it is not almost because last week uh, we were there again, so now it is over 100 gravity and lithic artifacts, all of them from field walking, we tried our best to made a regular archaeological excavation there during the summer, but we were in the end not allowed to do that, so we will try and maybe next summer we will be able to put some song there. Uh, so I am not able to tell you some, anything about connection between sites 1 and 4, because we do not nothing about stratigraphy uh, and about, about uh, anything that is under the surface. Uh, but definitely we wish to dig there because from uh, Bolehoš, Javorek and Čenčice, this, one, this site is the only site that can be excavated. Because in, in Bolehoš, it is uh, in the colony of family houses and in, in Javorek, it's in pond. Ah, here is a uh, topographic model of this site. And here is the combination of map model, and here are few of, of these artifacts, including that, that each point. <coughs> so, so, to conclude, there are only four known Paleolithic bifacial artifacts so far, just state of research. Uh, all of them are solitary. Uh, unfortunately, Strasology didn't help us, uh, despite the fact that each point from Shenchite was possibly used for cutting of soft, soft tissues. 
and Chemchisa is the most promising site because it can be excavated. So we will try next year to, to excavate there. So thank you very much for your attention. And now, if you have any questions, just uh, I am not the author of that analysis. It's Marek Pasad, but I will do my best if you have any questions about those models to enter you. Okay. 